Jesus. God, we've been talking about putting off and putting on. God, that's, that's our commitment to you in this relationship, but God. But praise God that our salvation rests nothing on nothing else but your name, God. It's the person and the work of Jesus Christ, God. And that is that's amazing, God. You, that's your plan by your design, God. And that's just a testimony to who you are, God, that you would come and save us while we were still sinners. God, that floors me every single time I wrap my heart around it. But sometimes I'm callous. Sometimes I don't let it penetrate my heart, God. So I pray that, God, tonight, this weekend, God, that there would be something in us that just, that just bursts at the seams, God, with that truth. That it's just about your name, God. It's just about your son and what you have done for us, God. So we just praise you and uh, we thank you in your son's name. Amen. All right, guys. I don't know who this is. David, is this yours from this morning? Up here? Where is it? Yeah, it is. It's probably cold. It's probably cold. I'll put it over here next to the lanterns. All right. All right, guys. Uh, so this is the, not the last session of the advance, right? Because tomorrow is the culmination of everything about what we're talking about in Ephesians 4. So we've had Ephesians 4, 17 through 19. Matt talked about it last night if you weren't here. Basically just about the people in Ephesus had a callus built up around their heart. that They were giving themselves into other things that weren't God. So that when God spoke, it was just, it was just a hard callus where they lost all sensitivity. Um, I know, I don't know if you guys have, you know, Matt brought up the example of playing guitar, how your fingers get callous so you can actually press in and you don't feel the chords kind of burning into your, uh, your, your fingers. I know, you know, if you do yard work or work out or do anything, you get calluses right here before your fingers. I like to chew them off, like, sometimes because, you know, it just, they just bug me. My wife, like, slaps me. She says, that's disgusting. I've got calluses on the, my big toe, like on the side of your big toe. I don't chew those off because that... That's like my limit. Hands, okay. I wash, you know, I wash my feet too, but that's, that's just different. Uh, but I think it's a very good illustration that Paul used here because we all know what it's like to have a callus and to lose sensitivity. And now he's saying, man, are you being callous towards God? Are you building up calluses 10 minutes at a time, a day? You run into other things to where you're like, why haven't I heard from God? We build up a callus over time. And then David talked uh, mostly about verses 22 to 24, about putting off, putting on, and the renewal of your heart and your mind. I think that's beautiful because in order, we all say, okay, those are definitely calluses. I don't want to change those things. And it's kind of the blueprint to change. We have a commitment in this relationship towards God to say, look, I want to change. I want to put off and put on. But at the end of the day, God, you're going to have to show up and be faithful and renew my heart. And he is faithful. You know, he will do that. But uh, what happens... When you say, all right, God, I'm, I'm going to commit. I'm going to commit to putting on, putting off. And I probably, and you guys probably know, you don't know what this feels like. So let me just tell you, I've made commitments that I've failed before. I've made promises to God. Like, I swear, God, I promise you. I mean, this is word for word in my mind. I will never do fill in the blank. Or, God, I swear, I promise last time I, I, I will be doing this from now on. And then, you know, three months down the road, I'm there going, man, I'm just a jerk. Like, how are we going to promise God something? Like, if you're going to promise anybody, like, you better fulfill that one. But you just, broken promise. And then you promise, you really mean it this time. So you promise again, I, sw- I promise this time for real. And then it's just boom, to the boom, to the boom. And Satan just eats at you because you just feel worthless. Like, if you can't, if you can't live right for God, who you know, you're just, you're pretty worthless. Like, it's just whispers of lies. So what happens, I, I hope, I, I pray that we feel challenged after what David said. It's okay, okay, this is what we do. We put off, put on. It's not one or the other. It's not one or the three, two or the three. It's, it's kind of these things marrying, just like he said. That's amazing. But what happens when you just aren't feeling it? Like, you're just like, I'm ready to, I'm ready to not do it right now. I mean, I'm just ready to kind of toss in the towel. Either it's become a list of things I put off, put on. It's like, all right, it's just monotonous now. Or you're like, I'm going to do this when I feel like it. I don't really feel like it, so I'm throwing in the towel today. Like, what is it that spurs us on? I never thought about that. Like, what is it? Is there something that we can kind of just like say, I'm not feeling it. I need an easy button right now. Like, like I, need, I need this like this superhuman, like, or else I'm going off the deep end. God, what, what do you have? Like, what can you, 
What, what can I have? What can I focus on? What is the fuel to this, to, to keeping commitments? To, to just to say, I need to do this, God. Because if you're like me, you, you've, you've failed a time or two. Um, and I'm going to kind of do a sermon no-no. Like, I like to save the, 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 the suspense to the end. I'm just going to tell you, the key is lust. You got, okay, another term or theme you're probably not familiar with. Maybe this is me. Like, you guys know, hopefully, I mean, we're just all in the flesh. Let's be honest here. We can admit it. We know what it feels like to lust after something or someone, right? We know what it's like to say, I, I've got to, like, kind of correct my eyes. I've got to kind of shift my heart because these are thoughts I know I shouldn't be thinking, but I'm kind of tempted with. But when you look at the definition of lust, let me read it. It's an intense desire. Makes sense? An appetite, almost, like a craving. So I, I, I don't know about you, but when I thought about lust before, it was like after a person. But you can definitely lust after other things, like I crave dust and time, right? Like I'm serious, and I mean, I'm surprised my wife didn't give an amen in the back. Like, you know, because I come home and I'm like, I just, I just, I had to get rid of my PS3, my Xbox and stuff like that, because it was just like dust and time, dust and time. Like, 11 to 12 at night, it's dust in time. And I'm just like, I, I'm like, I'm making excuses. Like, I don't have to get rid of it. Like, I can stop. But it was an area consistently that was a callus that built up towards God. And it's just, man, I just lust and I craved it. I'm at work going, 10 minutes left. I can't wait to get home and just veg out. ESPN, here I come, you know. So I, I, it's not just a person that you can lust after. These are things that you can put. You, you have a craving. You have an appetite. Like, it's insatiable. Like, you've got to have it. And it can definitely be towards people too. But I would submit to you, and we'll get to this at the end, that the key to sustaining commitment in our lives has to do with what we lust for. Um, if you open up to Ephesians 4, Paul kind of alludes to the word lust, kind of in a different scenario. Uh, we're gonna, so Maddie started off with 17 to 19. David did 22 to 24. I'm going to do the end of 19. Uh, to 21. So just that middle part, okay? So where we've been in. So I'm going to start off reading the whole verse 19. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity with a continual lust for more. That continual lust for more. Verse 20, you, however, did not come to know Christ that way. Surely you heard of him and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. So when I read this, and I'm, really we kind of blueprinted this whole weekend, the first two, of just this callousness, losing sensitivity, and how to change, putting off and putting on. And, you know, this is something, when I read this, lust came out, and the truth is that it is in Jesus. And I'm like, God, why are you kind of hammering on my heart about this? Like, why, these don't, I mean, he's not talking about lusting for Jesus, he's talking about lusting about other things that make you callous, that are impurities, that make you lose, you know, your sensitivity. So as I was going through this, though, it kind of came true. Um, or it kind of connected the dots for me. Uh, we know um, what it, it's like to lust after things that are not of God. But here's my question. I just kind of want you to have like a 10-second silence, like actually answering this in your head. What would it look like? What would it feel like to lust after God? What would it feel like? What would it look like to lust after God? I think God taught me something special in this that I had always seen lusting as something negative. Because, you know, you don't say, ah, I'm struggling with lust, guys. And it's like, oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Like, lust, mm. let's just kill that lust. Like, stop lusting. But I would say you and I were made to lust. You and I were made to crave and have an appetite for and have our lives centered around something. So lust in itself is... It's not bad. It's what are you lusting for? And I, I never even considered that. Like, you know, I just, I'm like, all these things, like, you know, that I could lust for, yes, are bad if they're not God. But what would it look like to lust if we were lusting after God? Hopefully through this, uh, this talk tonight, we get a, hopefully a little image. Hopefully the Holy Spirit is kind of showing you what it looks like for you. Um, and maybe you can imagine that. Maybe when I asked you that question, you went back to that time when you first came to Christ. You're like, 
I would jump off a cliff, God. Tell me now, I will jump. You want me to go overseas? I will go. You know why? Because the reality of what you did for me on Calvary, like, is making a home here. I will do whatever you say. I'll jump. I'm a jumper for you, God. I'll do whatever you say. And I know in Colossians, Paul writes, you know, that's not how you came to Christ. You know, it's, it's, you're kind of being held captive by hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on uh, human tradition and the basic principles of this world rather than Christ. So this is the same person writing in Ephesians. And maybe, you know, even though you came to Christ that way, you go, okay, I'm, I'm a jumper, I'm a jumper. Well, now what do I do? Okay, I read my Bible. Okay, I come to church. I, ha- I have conversations. I hang out in community. And it just becomes a tradition rather than a relationship as it started. I know I've, I've felt into that, man. I've fallen constantly into that. I have to check my heart when I come every Sunday to worship. Because am I just opening my mouth to sing because I'm here? Or am I like really responding like I first responded? So maybe, maybe that's how you connected. Man, that's, that's what it would look like to lust. Like kind of how I was head over heels in love with Jesus in the beginning. Verse 21 though. Um, man, this is so, it's just like a Christian phrase, right? For the, I want to read it again. Surely you heard of him, in reference to Jesus, and were taught in him, Jesus, in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. Like the truth that is in Jesus. That's where we're going to pack at the whole rest of the night. The truth that is in Jesus. Because I would say this, and you don't have to write this down, but just, just these connection points for you. Lusting after God springs from looking to and relearning the cross. Lusting after God. If, you, if you're like, man, I... I remember what that felt like, or I, I want to feel like that. Just know that lusting f- for God springs from looking to and relearning the cross. And we're going to look at those uh, here right now. Um, it sounds basic, though, but I, I would submit to you, when you look at the cross, you're like, oh, okay, look to the cross. But where you look, your, eyes all, your heart always follows, you know? It's like wherever you, guys, you know, you get on computer late at night, and you, you see things, your heart's right there, man, wherever your eyes are, it's like a, it's like a window into your heart, it's like whatever you allow your eyes to see, you know, so your heart follows, and I would submit to you, looking at the cross and relearning the cross is the key to fixing and ha- lusting after Christ, so um, the first thing I would say about looking to and relearning the cross is uh, we have to learn that there's no other way but the cross, here's what I mean, you and I put other things sometimes in place of the cross. Trying to get to God. First thing, we've kind of talked about it this weekend. I know I'm guilty of it. Um, is my good, my good deeds. You know, there's, I know we all probably struggle with um, trying to perform for God, right? Um, you want to do well in school. You want to get a good job. You want to be a good, uh, significant other to your girlfriend, boyfriend. You want to do well in life, and then Christ intersects our life, and you're like, yeah, like, I want to do well for God, like, I want to be great, be a great Christian, you know, and I, I've had, let me just have a confession time from, with myself, like, I'm a pleaser by nature, I don't know how many fellow pleasers are out there, you know, you guys get like, uh, you're raising your hand, because like, I don't want, I don't want to let them down, I'll raise my hand, like, pleasers, right, that's right, like, I, I mean, I remember when I first came to God, uh, I would be like, yes, like, if I don't read this many chapters a day, if I don't, like, pray this many hours of the day, like, God won't even want to see me. And that, I mean, I could pull up scripture after scripture after scripture saying that's just, that's just rooted in lies. But, like, if I was performing, it was cloud nine. When I wasn't performing, it was like, I can't even look at him. I don't even want to come to you, God. Like, I'm ashamed. 